welcome back to the channel. My name is Tempest. I'm really happy that you found your way here. Today, we will be doing a full mix down of the track that we produced last week when we did our full tutorial on how to produce progressive house. We will be covering everything today from exporting your stems, setting up your mixing session, balancing your tracks and doing the top down mixing approach to compressoring everything you will need to know to have a good basic mix. But let's not waste time. Let's get into the door and start this up. So let's just start with looking a bit at the production that we did last week. So this is the track that we came up with. It's roughly about 40 separate stems, which is the ones we will now start with exporting. And I'm thinking after we import this into our separate mixing dedicated template, we're gonna play a bit of the track um, just to get a feeling of where are we as a starting point before we begin our mix. But let's begin with just exporting everything from this production view so we can bring it in to our mixing view. If you want a more dedicated video on how to do this, you can check the link above here where I've done a full separate video on how to do this in the proper way. For now, I'm just going to run through this quickly so we can get into start mixing. Okay, so now we just check that we don't have anything on that we don't want to have on. For example, compressors, panning instruments, and imagers, etc. that we want to have control when we're going over to the actual mixing. If we keep that on now before exporting, we're not going to be able to change it once we have pulled it into uh, the new mixing session. So we'll just now go up to export audio video. We're gonna choose individual tracks and we want this one to end. Yeah, we can do to 104, that is fine. No normalize, 44.1K hertz, 24, no dither exports. Okay, and here we just wanted to go to the desktop, we'll do a new folder and we'll talk, call this mix stems. And we'll name it with just an underscore. And if you want more information on why I do that, you can check the other video and we do save. Great, there we have all of the stems exported. So what we can do now after this is that we can close down our production view. We don't need that one anymore. And we can also see that we have our new folder, mix stems, and here we have all of them ready. So what I like to do is I like to streamline my mixing as much as I can because mixing is not about sitting for hours and hours and tiring your ears. Mixing is about being efficient, making quick decisions and then coming back and back and revising and reiterating what you did. So what I have done is that I've created a mixing template which you can download from my website tempestmusic.com and what this is is basically everything pre-done. So I do not have to redo every step of my mixing every time I am to start with a new song. I know what I have as a foundation and what I will use every time I start my mixes. So before we dive into importing all of the stems, let's take a quick look at this template so you know what we will be working with. So straight off the bat, we can see that already all of the grouping is completed. And inside of each group, we're also done with the starting point when it comes to the effects and the plugins that we will use. Of course, every song will be different. Different. That is just how it is. But for a majority of the time, we will be using the same type of plugins when it comes to EQing, compressoring, glue compressoring, and doing delay effects and chorus, etc. So all of this is already pre-done, which means that we're saving a bunch of time and not having to strain our minds with thinking about what to do. So for example, looking at all of our send channels, we already have all of this setup. When it comes to short reverbs, we have long reverbs set up, 
We have delay effects, the vocal effect chain, which is a bit more comprehensive than the other ones. We got parallel compressoring uh, with a bit of extra compressoring after that as well. And a bit of a general uh, reverb glue for the full track where we're going to mix in a bit of everything to just get it to sit in the same room. So we don't have to worry about any of this. And we also have pre prepped the things that we will most likely use on the master track. It might not be that we're going to use all of this, but maybe we will. Um, but for now, let's keep this off just so we don't interfere with anything. And a plugin that I will use when doing this mixing, it's called the CLA NX. And what this is, is basically a reimagination of Chris Lord Algae's studio where he mixes and it will give you the possibility of sitting inside of his room and getting the the spectrum and the different studio monitors that he uses when he mixes. I haven't used this plugin yet so it's going to be interesting to try it out but what I really like about it as well is that you can tailor it according to your headphone EQ settings. So for example I'm, I'm running the uh, Bayer Dynamic DT900 Pro X and there we can choose those. If you have other, you can choose those. There is a lot of different presets here, so I think you're gonna find the ones that you have. So this will be a new experience for me as well, using the CLA NX. We'll see how it works. But this is what we will be working with. And we also, of course, have our reference tracks set up already. We have a side chaining track in case we want to use that instead of normal side chain uh, plugins and also the very important kick and bass bus, which we will get back to in a while. From this point, we will now start with importing our tracks and then start organizing them all in the correct way. So in order to get all of these tracks imported, we will go back into the folder with our mix stems. We'll open that up. We'll just take all of them and we will drag them over and we will put them beneath all of the tracks that we've already created. When now dropping these, you hold Command, and this makes it so that every track ends up on a separate channel. Otherwise, they're gonna end up as a long line on one channel, which will be hell. So, now we just need to let them import, and then we will move over to organizing this in a proper way, so it's all sitting where it should be sitting. Before continuing with the actual mix, we need to do one thing which is one of the most important things when it comes to mixing, and that is to set up our reference tracks. We don't steal other people's music, but it's always important to have a reference point when it comes to how does the songs of other producers sound and what type of artistic choices have they done in their mixes. So what we do is that we use the already set up reference track that we have inside of our mixing session. And we import a song that has the tape, same type of genre and vibe and feeling that we want to achieve with our mix. And in this particular session, I have decided to take inspiration from a very good artist called Nils Hoffmann, who works a lot with Ben Bomer in the German progressive house scene. So specifically one of his songs, which he called uh, it's a remix of the song called Other Side, is to me amazing. So my plan is that we're gonna use this as a bit of a foundation when moving forward and trying to make a bit of decisions in the mix. So the first step here will be that we need to lower the volume of the song because it's of course already mixed and it's mastered. So it's gonna be so much better than anything we currently have in our track. So we begin by taking this one down around minus 12 dB. This is a fairly good starting point when it comes to loudness. And the second step that we do is that we start to look at the spectrum of this song, because this is where we can find good information on making some decisions for our own song. So just to show you quickly what this will look like with the spectrum, we'll play a quick bit of the song.
So here we have the spectrum analyzer and we can see also in the isotope insights. We can see the loudness, we got the sound field and the spectrum where we can then make decisions for our own mix. So this will be a very important tool moving forward. From here now, we will start with arranging and coordinating all of the stems that we imported into this track. So we will now take these stems that are just down here by themselves and put them up where they should be inside of the mixing session. And what you will very quickly see is that some things have of course been imported that should not be here, which are the groupings and uh, a bit of the send buses that we had in the previous production view. So these we will of course remove. So here for example we have the kick group, this one we don't want. We take away that one, we take away the drums group. Uh, FX group. Synth group. Reverb, delay and the full song we don't want as well. And what we can see on a lot of the tracks here is that they are very low in terms of loudness. And this is because we didn't put on normalize when we exported the stems, because we want it to be on the levels that we want it to be. But this uh, also makes it difficult sometimes to actually see the actual things. So in, in some of these stems, we will be raising the gain just to be able to see what is happening on these tracks. And then we will lower down the gain either with a utility plugin or with the faders afterwards. Okay, so now the gain level seems fine. We can see what is happening on each track. So let's move forward with actually putting these where they should be. Okay, now we have all of the stems in the correct grouping. Now we just need to make sure they're all in the correct colors and everything that we OCD people need to have correct before we can start working for real. There we go. We are quite set now to begin. What we will start with as well is to create a couple of shortcuts. So for example, I want to be able to solo the reference track very quickly. So we will put a key command on this one, which I've already done. So as you can see, the R is linked to the reference. So by pressing R, we can quickly go between the solo only for the reference track. One more thing that we want to do is on the master, on our utility plugin, we want to quickly be able to solo between mono and stereo. This is a really important part of mixing to be able to see that your song still sounds good in mono when you don't have all of the stereo frequency and the siding and panning. So this one we also want to map out with a key, which we have done with the M. So by switching with M, we can quickly go between mono and stereo. And this one we want to keep off, of course, the reference track, uh, so that when we're playing the normal song, this one is not on, it's only on when we press R and we have the solo on for the reference. So we are now ready to actually begin with the, uh, the work on this mix. And the final thing that we need to do is to just name these pointers so we quickly can skip between the song and find the different places within the song. So intro, verses, drops, build-ups, etc. So we're just going to quickly listen through the song and place these where they should be to make our lives easier later. Okay, so we are done with the first part of 
arranging the track, getting it into the actual positioning within the mixing session. The first step now will be gain staging. And here we will apply the top-down mixing approach, where we will start with the most important elements of our track, which will be the kick, the bass, and the main synth in this case. If you had vocals in your song, it would also, of course, include the vocals. So let's jump into that part. So we are now moving in to the start of this actual mixing, which will be with the top-down mixing approach where we start with the kick, the bass, the main synth, and maybe the snare to get the most important elements sitting correctly first. If those are done well, then everything else will just be able to fall in place. So we will start with only doing gain staging on these four elements, and then we're going to compare with the reference, and we're going to look at the spectrum analyzer to see where are we in, uh, in relation to our reference track. So let's begin with the kick. And here we will start with anchoring the kick on... Uh, let's just loop this first so we have the same type of section going. We will anchor the kick on minus 12 and peak. So there will be perfect. Then let's bring in the other kick as well here. And a little mixing trick which is called the, the pre-kick sap, which is just a very, very, very quick and short little zap that is just before our main kick. And what this does is it gives this little thin fizzle to the kick, if you can hear. which makes it sap through in a much better way. Okay, so we have our kick where we want it to be. It's peaking at around minus 12 dB. Let's bring in the bass as the next one. So let's begin with the main bass. as well. Cool, and the little plucky one. So that will be our starting point. Let's also take in the clap, which will be a very important element overall. Cool, that is good. What this does is, because now we're doing from the top down, by anchoring these parts first, we have a very good starting point to be able to get our mix to end up where we want it to be, which is around minus six dB before going into the mastering stage. If we want the kick to become louder than this, then we will not, we will never again touch the, the levels for the kick. If we want it to be louder, then we need to lower other elements in the mix. So this gives us a starting point and an anchor to the continued progression of our mix. Let's continue with taking in the lead synth. we actually have this uh, CLA-MX on, we can go in and we can switch between different monitors. Which is quite cool. So we get different references directly inside of the mixing. And you can tilt it to get the sound in different places. So it's a cool plugin. 
Okay, let's just bring in the harmonies as well for this one. So here we have basically the five most important elements already sitting quite nicely in the mixing spectrum of our song. Let's go back to our reference track here and check the spectrum analyzer on that one and then compare with the one from our mastering track. So let's uh, get these both up at the same time. So this is the main of our track, which we can see is hitting around 50 quite well, but we have a lot of low end information still here remaining. If we instead go over to our reference track and we'll open up that spectrum, you can see uh, we're hitting at around the same, but we have a much bigger peak here at around 85 90 hertz that we don't really have. This one seems to be thumping a lot better than our track is currently doing. Yeah, you see here, it was much higher in the 80, 90s than it is in ours. So that is uh, an interesting fact that we can take into consideration now that we start mixing. Can we see anything else when it comes to how this is panned out? Quite a similar curve, um, also quite a lot of sub-information in this song as well. So that is quite similar. Okay, so what we've done now is that we have the five major elements done when it comes to gain staging and balancing the levels. We will now continue with pulling in element after element into the mix and making it sit correctly. Once we are done with that, we will move on to panning and trying to get a bit of uh, stereo imaging on this track. But let's uh, quickly go through all of the remaining tracks, pull them up to the levels they should be, and then move onwards from there. move it a bit to the most busy part of the song. So we'll start it here instead. Let's see. And let's reference quickly in mono and see what we have there.
Okay, so those are the primary things that should be taken up in the mix. What we have left now is a bunch of, you know, these different effects that only come in at certain points. So these we will bring in as well, of course, uh, but we have to go to all of the separate places to see where they should actually come in. All right, so all of the elements are now introduced to the song. They all have their own place. What we will move on to now is panning. What elements should be centered and mono, and what elements can we put a bit to the sides to give stereo width and also to leave room for the things that are important in the middle. So now that we're moving in to working with the panning and the stereo field and image of this song, I want to first of all just quickly discuss why we need to do this. So let's look at the picture we have in front of us. And I have borrowed this one from edmtips.com. Will Darling is a fantastic guy, you should check him out. He has some amazing courses when it comes to producing EDM music. I've done a few of them and I absolutely endorse them, they're so good. And this is the picture that we want to paint with our song. And of course, everything can't be in the center. It would, of course, in that case, clash with each other. So what we need to do is to find the different places for our different elements. So for example, when it comes to the kick and the bass, this will, of course, stay right in the center, along with, uh, for example, the vocal or and sometimes the, the main synth as well and the snare will also be higher up in the frequency range, but also in the mid. But when it comes to hi-hats and ambience or you know, pads, we don't want that in the center. We want it panned to the right or the left, and we want it to be up in its own part of this frequency spectrum, so we don't have things clashing with each other. So if you see that you, for example, have a lot of things happening around one kilohertz already, Maybe you need to EQ away one of your elements so it doesn't clash with other things in your song. Because if not, things will get muddy and you won't have a clear and precise mix. So this is what we're going to do now. Let's jump back into our song that we're working on. and Start looking at what kind of things we can pan and put into the stereo image of this song. So now... We have the master on mono, and uh, let's look at part of the song here in, in the intro, for example. So that is in stereo instead of in mono. So a couple of things that of course will be easy to pan will be Things like toms, open hats, shaker sounds, and all of these drums that don't have to be in the center of our song. So we can try and play around a bit with both panning plugins and only using the center we have here and put them in different places in our mix to make it not stand directly in the middle. And here on the open hat, for example. Let's do like this, that we, uh, we take away all of the soloing. So we, of course, get very different images of the sound by panning it to the right or the left. So let's, let's put that one there. That is fine. And how about this groovy shaker sound? Maybe we'll pan you out a bit. Closed hat, I think will keep you quite centered. Let's put 
switch a bit to the side. And what more do we have? The toms, we panned a little bit to the left and to the right. Very easy effect. The top loop here, let's look at that one. This is an element I think I want to keep quite centered. Um, I like the build that it does. The clap we will keep in the center, so we're not going to pound that anything. Let's look at our hat and perk loops. Very simple element. Uh, I think we're going to keep this one centered as well, but we're going to EQ quite a lot to have it only in the higher frequencies. And the percussion loop. This one as well, I feel like this is a bit of the heartbeat of the song, next to the kick of course. So I'd like to keep this one centered as well, but we'll make sure that it doesn't clash with other drums. So let's look at the full drum picture that we have right now. And see if we want to make any changes to this. Let's check in mono. So it's a bit of difference, it's not that big, but it's, uh, it's still a bit of difference, but that's good. Let's run with that for now. The bass, we're not gonna touch of course when it comes to panning, that is to be mono and in the center, so no changes will be made there. Let's look at other things that we can pan out to the sides. So when it comes to effects, of course this is parts that we can uh, play around with a bit. So let's check at what we have here. For example, the white noise. What we can do with this one is we can add a bit of imagers to put this out in the stereo field. So we go into our plugin structure. If you want to know more about my plugin structure, you can see the video above here. But let's take the stereo spreader from Isotope and put on our white noise. Pull this down to around there. And we don't want any information in the sub frequencies to be panned out as we saw on the stereo image field that will only be muddy. So we only want to work with the stuff above, uh, I don't know, maybe above 500 hertz. So then we will adjust band 2. And what we can see on the vector scope is then that we're getting a very different image of the sound compared to how it was before. It was very just linear to the left and right. Here we are getting a very much increase in the stereo and image field to the right and the left. Could also press the stereoize button, which will basically accentuate this even more. What we can see on the in out is that we are getting quite a bit of gain increase by doing this. So let's decrease it a bit as well. So we don't end up destroying the, uh, the full sound. Alright, so that is one that we can move to the side. We can also maybe work a little bit with uh, risers and downlifters and stuff like this and try to push it out of the center stage and instead place it out to the sides. So let's not have this one on, let's go to the separate ones. So we have, let's put these way in the field. I'll add that one 
as well, of course. And that is no good, but if we do like that... Yep, yeah, then that is not clashing in the middle. How about this crash? Maybe since those two will be at the same time, we try to put this one way over to the right instead. Yeah, that might work. What more do we have here? This weird little loop that I kind of enjoy. Let's take away the other drums for now so we only hear that one. It's a bit of a ambient noise, more natural sound. Um, I like to have these types of elements in my songs when it comes to birds and nature interfering with our songs. This one, I don't know, let's put it a bit to the right. Uh, it's not something that is primary to the song. It's more of a supporting element that comes in now and again. So let's keep it there for now. What more do we have? We have a super delayed crash. Let's look at that one. So this one already has a bit of built-in um, stereo imaging because of me leaving that on when we exported it from the production view. So we'll keep that as is. The long drum fill. This one we will not be touching because this will be a main part of the build-up before the drop. So that one should be in center. Let's look at the white noise. Here we did with our imaging, so we don't have to do anything there. The drum fill, that should be quite centered as well. We can put it a little bit to the left. So a very short little drum fill. And the white noise buildup. So on this one, I would like to actually put in a type of LFO effect so it pans automatically. So what we do is we take the stereo tool from Ableton and we put this one on there. So what this is, is basically an LFO tool that we can control so that it pans automatically. And we do this by pressing map and then going to this one. So now this will map uh, for the white noise buildup if it's panning to left or right. And we can do this by adjusting the depth of how far it will go and also the rate. So it shouldn't be too, too quick. But let's listen to what it is before and now after. So very little thing. And now. Around there, I think, is fine. So we're going from quite a flat to... We're pushing it out to the sides a bit more and also creating a bit of tension and interest in, in things happening between the left and the right of the song. So that is good. So we have... The, the drums done, we have the effects a bit panned on some of the elements, not on all of them. Let's look at what more we can pan. So here we have, for example, in the lead group, we have two elements, which is called the left panned fifth harmony and the right panned fifth harmony. If we listen to these, we of course take away the old thing, so we only have those. This one is already panned to the left and this one is already panned to the right because as with the other elements I just talked about, these had built in panning from the production view. So we don't really have to touch these. These are already preset with left and right panning. So that is fine. The main synth we of course want to keep in the middle. We might do a bit of stereo image with 
uh, just imaging, but we're not touching any left or right on this one. Let's look at the synth group. This one, for example, the high ambient synth. This only comes in in the second drop. So it adds a bit of excitement and interest to the song. Nothing more than that. We can pan this a bit to the right. And I would also say to put a LFO tool on this one. Ah, then we're adding it to that chain. We want it outside of that. So let's put on the LFO tool and see what happens. And we map it to there instead. We don't want it that quick. We want a, just a bit of movement. Yeah, I like that. It adds a good ambience to that track. The pianos, we're gonna maybe pan these just a little, little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Let's look at the, the main grand piano. Just keeping it a bit to the left to give a bit more of direct space for the main synth, which we'll be playing at the same time. Cool, I'm happy with that. Uh, one thing that could be interesting is the plucky bass, because this is not just a normal bass sound. This is more of a, a pluck than a bass, to be honest. As you hear on this one, we have a bit of stereo movement already. I think we had the LFO tool on this one in the production, so it's already moving by itself. So let's not touch it for those reasons. Okay, I would say that is fairly fine when it comes to panning for this song. Let's listen to it now, both in mono and stereo, just to compare between, uh, between the two. So nothing else is soloed. Good, let's do like this that we put it on just before the drop and listen to it. So now it is in stereo and then we'll turn it on to mono. So what I heard from that is that the white noise was way too high. Uh, this one, that needs to come down. Okay, let's reference with our reference track just to see where we are right now. So we still have a long way to go with the mixing so far, but we haven't even started EQing yet, so no worries there. But we're good with the stereo image for now. So what we will now actually move on to is EQing, which is the most <laughs> tedious and fun part of this entire little venture we are doing today. So let's jump over to that. Moving into the mixing part of this video, we actually already have a lot done because of our mixing templates. Because if we're looking at each and individual track here, we already have EQing set up with the reductive EQ on each stem. 
So what we will do is just to use the plugins that we have already put up and then go over each of the stems and see where should these both high pass and low pass filters end up in order to mix well with that specific stem. So the same way here, let's start with the most important element. So we'll start with bass and uh, snare and synth, and then we'll move on from there. So if we start with our basses, for example, can begin by looking at the main bass. And we'll go from here. So you want to find the points where you can take away as much as you can without actually interfering with the sound that you're EQing. And since we have a sub bass as well, we don't have to keep that much of the low end on the main bass. We will take that in with the sub bass instead. So let's keep that one around maybe 20 hertz and just down here. So we're not thinking anything about additive EQ at this time. We're basically doing reductive EQ to take away the frequencies we don't want in the mix. We'll come to the additive EQ later. Let's continue with the plucky bass. This is a more high frequency sound, so we don't need that much of this bass information. To be honest, we should probably rename this from plucky bass because it's really not a bass sound, it's just a, a pluck. But anyways, it is what it is. So I think we are fairly good here. Let's move on to the synth. And we'll start with this here. And here we want to, uh, of course, have all of this before the LFO. So like that. And let's put this on. And for now, we'll just take off everything else. So only the reductive EQ for now. It's basically just up here that we want this sound to be. Everything below is just noise. So that is good for you. Let's plug in the grand piano. Same here, let's take off everything else for now. Let's start from there instead. So around there. So that is fine. We move on to the chorus piano instead. Let's do like this, we'll just pull out the reductive EQ for now. Okay, good, we have the pianos inside as well. Let's take the lead group. So let's start with the main synth.
down there and most likely it will work just the same for these two. Just like this, we only do this instead. The other one. So as you see, I'm moving very quickly here because as I said in the beginning, mixing is not about sitting for hours and hours and hours and trying to redo everything you do and think about the same thing four times. We need to be quick in our decisions so we get it done. After that, we can come back in a day or two and re-listen the things that we've done to see if we want to change anything. But we begin by doing this quick because otherwise we're going to make mistakes. Okay, let's move on to just looking at the kick as well. So this one needs to come down to around there. Let's see if we want to do anything with the kicks. just do a very standard EQing on those and we can do like this we just copy this setting do the same on that one then we copied everything of course we do like this okay so then we have the kick with us as well and maybe on the little sap here we uh, just take away a bit of the low stuff because this is only a high frequency pitch. So if we only listen to that one. It's only that type of sound. Keep you low. Cool. So then we have the kick with us as well. Then it's only the drums left to go through. And let us now only focus on the drums. So we take away everything else right now. So we begin here. So same here, we're working quickly, we're just doing this roughly in a way that we see fit. But no long decisions here, we just do it. And as I said, we're trying to EQ away as much as we can without interfering with the actual sound and, and soul of each stem. Okay, moving onwards to the toms. Cool, that will do for now. Open hats. This part here just sounds a bit muddy. So I think we're gonna remove all of that. And just going up to around 2000 Hertz instead. 
Then we have our little groovy shaker sound, which is very low in the mix. Gives a nice feeling to the song. But maybe we keep this a bit higher. So we only keep that part. Take away a bit of the mid frequencies on the sound. And last but not least, a little closed hat here on drop number two. Okay. Last thing, looking at our little effects group and seeing what we have in store here. So this ambience track, let us pull this one up a bit because we can barely see it. So we do like that. And then we pull it down. And it's not a lot happening here, but I'm thinking we can at least take away so we're not clashing with any bass information or kick. So this is more of just a little mid-range happening. The crystallizer, so this one might be a bit more tricky. Because it's a little pitchy noise. And we'll do the same here, we'll pull this up a bit. So we see it more. And how is this sounding in the mix right now? I want to hear before. Now we need to take away the kick. So it is a bit too high pitched, I feel. It's a bit straining on the ears. So I'm thinking that we keep this as a mid-range instrument instead. Yeah, because that's the part we don't want in. So we'll keep it there. How is that for difference? Okay, let's work with that. Uh, on all of these other elements, it's basically just doing the exact normal, this type of filter, uh, because we're not gonna have anything real happening on any of these. So just taking away the frequencies we don't need. So we'll keep this one a bit higher to not have everything in the mid range around the 1000 Hertz. We'll push it up a bit to be around the two, three thousands. this super crash. Because here we already have a second crash happening at the same time. So trying to keep them in different frequency fields to not clash too much with each other. Looking at our long drum fill as well. Yeah, let's keep that one basically as is. Coming to our white noise here, nothing too much should happen. Just taking away a bit of the bass and lowering a bit on the high frequencies there. A little short drum fill.
keep it like that. And last but not least, a little white noise buildup. Where we do the same, we just remove basically anything under 200 and lowering it a bit above 10k. So that is a quick EQing of this track. What we will also do now is to do a thing with EQing where we try to duck the kick where the bass is hitting so that they two do not clash. So what we will do now is go to bass group and we will put on a spectrum analyzer and we will see where will the bass have its peaks. We can see here around 60, 46, 50, 40. And then we'll try to carve out a bit of space with an EQ on the kick for this. So nothing much, but just small little, small little holes for the bass to jump through. So we will go in and we can create some more here. So let's do a five. This one we will of course have with a very small, but let's see, we had around 80. And then we had around 60. And what more did we have? Sixty. Got forty five. Forty. So we'll do a little carving around forty as well. Dragging the wrong ones, that's never good. So we'll take the seven and we're gonna pull this one down just a little bit, around 40 hertz. It's basically just lowering a decibel just to give some more space for our bass sound. So let's see the difference here in between now if we listen to the kick and the bass. Small difference, but it gives a bit more of breathing room for the bass to come through. We're of course going to get into everything with parallel compression and side chaining and stuff like that, but uh, for now, let's be satisfied with the EQing as it is right now, and we move onwards. Before we do that, however, let's run through a bit of the song and check towards the reference mix, and also check it in mono and stereo to see that nothing weird hasn't happened. So we'll unmute everything and we can go to, let's do here at the new chord progression where a lot of things is happening. And we'll play the song and then compare with the reference track. Check mono. We can also go into the CLA NX and listen to the different studio monitors that we have at hand. Yeah, let's listen to the boom box as well. And 
if we check the reference track in the boombox. So we of course hear that the kick is coming through a lot more from the reference track so far. But that's fine, we haven't gotten to any additive EQing or anything like that, so we're still in a good place in the mix. Let's leave it at that for the EQing, let's go over to compression and side chaining. Looking in now to compression. We will begin by looking at one great tip that I learned from edmtips.com, which is this K and B bus. By routing all sound coming from the kick and the bass groups into this specific return track, we can create a very good gel between the two and make them cohere much more together. And what we do this with is one of the standards from Ableton, so it's called the drum bus inside of Ableton. And this is an amazing tool that just gives so much life to this. So if we listen to this one now, soloed, They all feel very separated from each other. So what we will start with is to start with glue compression, a little bit of reductive EQ and then adding on our drum bus. Let's add on the glue compressor, looking at maybe a 3 decibel gain reduction. So around there. And then we add on the goodness, which is the drum bus. So you hear straight away, what a difference. We can make the dry wet come in. But now that we're starting to shape like this, I'm actually going to go ahead and move the plucky bass, <laughs> because it's not a plucky bass, and move that into the synth group instead. Because I don't want to mix in that higher pluck into this K and B bus. That makes it much better. So let's just add these together so we can on off them at the same time. Listen to this difference that this little thing does. It is such, such a difference. It's quite insane. Um, of course, we have a bit of gain increase here, so we can lower the output a little bit, but let's also play around with the boom and the crunch a little bit before we continue. at the moment with only these two. Let's change the order of these. So we put the glue compressor after the drum bus instead. hear that in the context of the entire song. Mm -hmm. 
huge, huge difference. Okay, let's leave that for now as it is. Let's move ahead to compressing the base separately for a while. And also looking into side chaining towards the kick. So first thing, if we look at the base group here, I don't think we're going to have the need of any of these EQs. So we can take those away for now. Let's leave the utility in case we want to do any automations. But let's only look at the base for now. And just glue these two a little bit together. Just around two, three decibel. And we increase that a little bit afterwards. Okay. That's good. And if we then look at the bases themselves, on both of these we have OTT. And let's let's see what happens if we put them on. So let's do each one individually. good and then after this i'm thinking just a little little, little compressor nothing big but just maybe a one decibel or something just taking a bit off the edges after the ott and moving into kickstart which is a very nice nicky romero plugin gives a very good pumping bass feeling. I like this one a little bit more than just doing normal side chaining when it comes to the bass because this one has a much more clean side chaining. Um, so doing it 100% is way too much most of the times because you get a really... this is more of a main room <laughs> uh, Nicky Romero type of sound but for the progressive house that I'm doing it's a bit too much. But we take it down to around there to give it a good breathing for the kick and we can also see the different presets that we have here and we have the one called free punch okay let's look at the other one the sub bass same with kickstart at like 70% and free punch. Let's hear them both together. Cool. And on the sub bass, I also want to try one thing called the BX sub filter from Plugin Alliance. Uh, it's a Brainworks plugin and I haven't tested this one out yet. So uh, let's see what this one does. does. Let's turn off kickstart for now. This one could really put on some uh, low end. See the difference between those two now? Uh, that is quite a substantial difference in terms of sub information. So, with this much, we're going to have to pull down a bit on the main out. Let's put in the kick. Mm, 
sounds good for now. I'm happy with that. Let's move on to the synths and look at those. And we'll keep the kick in for now. And here it will be a bit more of just doing a normal type of side chaining with a, a little bit of duck for the kick, so nothing really interferes with the kick that we have coming. And of course, normal compression for some of them. Um, so here we don't need these, and we're not going to need any OTT. We might need kickstart. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's go with kickstart for that one. And a normal compressor with just around 50 release time. We don't need that quick attack. Just taking down the tops a bit on that one. And this one, how do you look? Keep a quite high release time on that. Quick attack. Um, we need some more reductive EQing here because those are quite sharp tones. So let's find what is the perpetrator here? Okay, so here we have something. So we'll do a dip there. Okay. And I also put in a side chain that will only go towards the specific lead sound that we have. So in this case, it will be the main synth. So that it ducks just a bit for the main sound um, to not interfere too much with our main synth. Okay, let's move forward to our pianos. Let's look at a bit of OTT here. Move forward with a compressor. So we increase the attack a little bit on this one. Don't want it to be too harsh. And on this one, we also want a side chain. Here we can take away the reductive additive EQ. And on this one, let's do it towards the kick. with a quick attack and quite a quick release. We only want it to duck for the first part of the kick. So that should be fine. Let's move on to the chorus piano. Uh, 
add some side chaining towards the kick. quite a bit because this is a very attenuated sound that goes a long way alongside the kick so we want that one to duck quite a lot for the beginning of our kick cool moving on to our synths so this one will of course also need a bit of gluing when it comes to the lead group so let's listen on all three. Good. And then we move on to the synth itself. Let's look at some OTT for this one. I don't want that much on the high frequencies here. It's more on the mid that I want it. And then some compressure as well. to scale it together we don't need any oh, we can keep the reductive eq in case something came back in here in the low frequencies after the ott nothing for additive eq at this point in time let's look on some side chaining here as well Let's just copy this and move to the other two so we don't have to redo everything once more. So we can actually just remove the effects rack from these. And then we copy it over. Good. I like what I hear. And some more that will, of course, need some side chaining. It's going to be the crystallizer because it's also a very ongoing sound during the entire drops. So let's put some side chain on and compressoring. In case something came back here in the lows, we'll keep the reductive EQ on. And let's see for additive if there's anything we want to enhance here. Maybe just a little bit here around 2000. Like that. 
and on the ambience as well since this is also just going along the entire song we'll put on the side chaining towards the kick so when the kick is coming we're not interfering with that one and yeah i don't think any compressoring will be needed here so let's uh, skip that one and here we will not need any of those that is good and let's look at the white noise. This is already a bit of side chained, but let's just make sure that we don't have any issues. And actually here, let's make it kickstart instead. So we'll do side chain and kickstart. Like that, quick and simple. Let's uh, skip the compressor on that one for now. Let's do that one instead on the full group and look at a little bit more of a normal compressor. We'll take the Ableton one and just look at the full FX group. So we don't have all of these high sounds coming through too much. And then the glue compressor as well. We'll add that a bit. Good. All we have left now are the drums. So on the drums here, I would like to also look at adding the drum bus. So we'll go into mixing and mastering, which is where I think I had put the drum bus. No, maybe it's under drums. No, then it should be under general tools. There we go. So we'll add the drum bus as well. Uh, did we turn that one off? No, there we go. And let's listen to the drums before and after the drum bus. We'll take away the kick for now. And let's put on the drum bus. Okay, let's just adjust the output a bit. Totally different sound. Glues it together much better as well. And then we'll look at some glue compressoring here. Where we'll then do the makeup with around three and a half decibels to adjust for the compressoring. We don't need this one in that case. And for reductive EQ, let us just look at the bass frequencies here and take away anything that might have happened below 100 and above 100. That should be it for now for the drum bus as well. Uh, we might go into the separate tracks and do a little bit of compressoring and stuff like that, of course. But uh, for now, let's keep it simple. We'll start there. We have a good bass point. Let's listen to the full song now once more and see what has happened. And mono. And comparing to our reference. So, of course, the reference is a much more airy than our song is. It feels like we have a bit of mud left in the middle. 
around the one to five thousand hertz in the mix, but we're we're getting closer to what might be an end result. The time has come to start adding effects to our track, and we will try to do this primarily and almost exclusively with our return tracks that we have set up here with the short reverbs, the long reverbs, the delays, the parallel compression, and the general glue reverb. Of course, there will be some additional effects that will be specific to some of the stems and tracks, but we will try to keep to these ones to keep a cohesive mat of reverb and delay for the entire track to not have things stand out on their own. So let's go through all of these ones and see where can we add some reverb and where can we add delay. So starting to look at our return channels, I'm thinking we start with what I call the general glue. Let's look at what this is. So on this channel, oh, sorry. There we go. On this channel, we have the flex verb from SSL. And this is an amazing reverb plugin that I just love. If you want to know more about it, you can check above here right now. I've done a more in depth review on this plugin so you can get some more information. But what we have on here right now is just the preset Studio A mix gel. So this is nothing big, it's nothing grand. This is just to give a sense of everything being recorded in the same space, in the same studio. So what we will do is just to basically pull up the send knobs on everything to this channel to full, and then we're gonna blend it in with the fader. So let's begin by doing that. Okay, we got all the knobs to full. Let's start playing and we increase the volume on the return tra track successfully. So if we go up a lot, we can hear the effect of what it is doing. Basically just a room reverb. So we just want a little bit of this inside the mix. To make it have a bit more ambience and atmosphere. So if we play the mix with and without it, then we'll take it away. Nothing grand, just giving a sense of everything being in the same room. Moving onwards to a bit of short and long reverbs and things that might need that. So for example, looking at our synth and the pianos, maybe we can add a bit of reverb on these and a bit of delay. So let's look at the plucky bass. And let's add a bit of short reverb to this. Let's see what happens if we add a bit of delay as well. Let's have a little bit of that on and let's see if we move onwards to the other one as well, the high ambience 
synth. So let's see if we do a bit. This is already quite reverby. So I don't think we actually need that much reverb on this. And delay. Not really. It's not adding that much. Let's keep that out. Let's look at the pianos. Then we want to be here. Add a bit of that and... That's good. And let's look on this one as well, which is the chorus piano. That will do. Let's not put on any delay on that one since it's already quite stabby. Moving on, let's check a bit of the drums, if we can do a bit of reverb or delay on some of these. So, we have these ones here. Oh, gotta take away this one. So we're adding a bit of long reverb on this one instead, which is just another preset on the flex verb. So the vocal hall instead, so a bit of a longer and bigger sound than the F that we had on the other one. So just a, a very big hall reverb. That in the in the mix. Sounds fair. Let's look at the clap slash snare. Just a little bit of both. And the main clap. A little bit of room reverb or short reverb on that one as well. Let's look at our other things here. We have a top loop, very low. Maybe we can put a bit on delay on this one, make it bounce a bit. And let's do a little bit of reverb as well. Same here with the toms. Just some room reverb. Glue that in and make them jump a bit with a bit of delay. It's fair. Moving on to open hat. So just checking if we should have a shorter or a longer reverb on this one. Maybe actually do a longer one. Have it ring out a bit more 
and we're not going to do any delays on that one. And we check those last two, our groovy shaker. This one can do with a bit more delay. Increasing the groove. And just a little bit of short reverb. And then we check the last one, the closed hats. So a bit of room reverb on that one as well. What I also want to do with our uh, return tracks here is the parallel compression. And here I'm thinking a bit more of general parallel compression for everything. So my plan is that we do the same as we did with the general glue. So my plan is that we do the same as we did with the general glue, that we basically feed everything into this parallel compression and mush it up together to give a bit of a mat of the same type of sound. So we do the same. We go through all of the knobs and bring in a little bit of everything to uh, return track number E. Good. And now let's then solo out the parallel compression track and bring it in slowly to see the kind of effect we want. So here I'm also thinking that we can do a bit of distortion to add saturation to the full track. So let's add the decapitator from Sound Toys to just give a bit of grunge. And the full wet. And we have uh, quite a high drive because we want that little gritty sound coming out. Then we're going through the Teletronics compressor after we have the side chaining. So let's listen to this in the mix. gives a bit more of a cohesive feeling to the entire track and making it feel as one instead of separate stems. Ah, all right, people, I think we will call it a day there. My ears are getting tired. I don't think I'm making any good decisions when it comes to mixing wise anyways anymore. We've gone through a lot today. We've gone through how to set up a proper mixing template. We've gone through gain staging, how to do the top down mixing technique, anchoring the kick, we've gone through EQing, we've gone through compressors, reverbs and delays, uh, effect channels, a bunch of stuff. From here on, the next step would be to look into automations and final polishing and tweaking and any other effects that we would do on individual channels. But that might come in a separate episode, not this one. As a final thing, before we uh, take it off today, I want to uh, give you a rundown of the song, where we are right now, together with some 
nice visuals so you get a feeling of the vibe of the song. Thank you so much for joining if you've made it this far. I really appreciate it and I hope that you've learned something on the way as well. My name is Tempest and I am your humble servant when it comes to helping you with your music production. Leave a like or a comment if you like what I do and if you really like what I do, you can always become a Patreon at patreon.com tempest. Thank you, see you again. <music>